Bowl, and it's been sold out for months for this game between 14th-ranked Tennessee and number 15, Ole Miss. At Mississippi, Coach Billy Brewer calls this the biggest challenge and the biggest game in school history. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jim Nance, and we welcome you to the Liberty Bowl for Ole Miss against Tennessee. Now, both schools control their own destiny as far as the Sugar Bowl picture. Should the Volunteers win their last three games, then they'll be playing in New Orleans on January 1st. Same goes for Ole Miss. A win today and then a win next week against Mississippi State, and the Rebels return to New Orleans for the first time in over two decades. Right now, down on the field, the Tennessee Volunteers are about to come out onto this field at the Liberty Bowl, wondering how will they react after the emotion they left on the field last week in a game against Notre Dame. It's the 100th season of football at Tennessee. They're hoping to return to the Sugar Bowl for the first time in five years. Right now, let me bring in my colleague down on the sidelines. Take it away, Tim Brandt. All right, Jim, as I wander through the Tennessee Volunteers, let me tell you, it's been a Cinderella-type season for Ole Miss. Although the players don't feel they've gotten their due respect, they put together back-to-back -back winning seasons for the first time since the early 70s. They've done it with a running back by the name of Randy Baldwin. They say he's the best running back in the history of the school, and in the last six games, he scored 13 touchdowns. Ole Miss runs a two-quarterback system. They've got a big guy, and I'm telling you, he is strong. His name is Russ Howes, and he is six foot four, strong arm with the ability to run. But today it is Tommy Luke who gets the call. They describe him as a banged up, broken down type quarterback. His assets are the intangibles, and they say he inspires everybody around him. Well, today they have to be emotionally charged, and right now they look to be ready, Jim. Here comes Ole Miss. Ole Miss has won seven straight games, the longest win streak in 27 years. They've been playing since 1902. In fact, they met right here in Memphis back then. It's a shootout Southern style coming up. Tennessee and Ole Miss. CBS Sports presents college football live from the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. It's the Tennessee Volunteers versus the Mississippi Rebels. Today's CFA game is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. Braun Electric Shavers, it is through superior design that superior performance can be achieved. And by Coors Light, the one that won't slow you down, the Silver Bullet is the right beer now. We welcome you back to the Liberty Bowl, and I'm going to be bringing in my colleague right now, John Dockery, on the sidelines. Doc? You know, Jim, when people talk about Ole Miss, they don't talk about individual stars, but really a very bonded team, almost like an extended family, made even closer by a tragedy to one of their own. And that was Chucky Mullins, who a defensive back last year made a tackle against Vanderbilt. He broke his neck. He's paralyzed in a wheelchair. And though he won't play a down of football today, his presence is very much felt. As a matter of fact, one of his teammates said, we'll be playing for Chucky Mullins for the rest of our lives. One of his teammates, Chris Mitchell, will be wearing his jersey, number 38. It's an honor that they have here and will continue through the years. Ole Miss kicking away to Tennessee to start it off. And Dale Carter from the 15. Good run by Carter out to the 43-yard line and tackled by Max Smith, the kicker. A return of 28 yards. Ole Miss has won the toss and elected to defer. Now, Tennessee will start Andy Kelly at quarterback. Had a record-setting performance against Notre Dame in a losing cause. In the backfield, Roland Poles and Tony Thompson, who leads the SEC in rushing. Carl Pickens and Alvin Harper. Big performances against the Irish. And tied in Mark Adams. First down, Tennessee from its 42-yard line. Right away with Tony Thompson with a hole. And inside Ole Miss territory and out of bounds at the 41, a 17-yard gain. Carl Pickens gave him a block, and Chauncey Godwin pushed him out. 
But Jim, right now, early on, Ole Miss has to forget that it's playing a powerful Tennessee team and just play football. Big, strong offensive line for the Volunteers. Fisher in the middle. Maslinski and Baird outside. Baird's had neck problems. Heard it against Temple three weeks ago. And McCray and Davis, both first-rounders in the NFL, guaranteed. First down run by Thompson. Picks up about four. Tackled by Roger Hancock. You correct him. McCray and Davis, the tackles. Two of the best in the country. Well, McCray, 6'7", 291 pounds. Very quick, light feet. And then Davis is 6'4", 310. Texas with a huge fourth quarter. Trouncing TCU 38-10. Opening drive for Tennessee. Third play of the game. Pass to Alvin Harper. And the catch made inside the 25. A gain of 14. Two things early on. It almost looks as Tennessee wants to show the nation, say, hey, we lost to Notre Dame last week, but it's not going to get us down. They've come out to firing on all cylinders. Meanwhile, Ole Miss seems to be in awe of Tennessee, and they've got to just buckle down now and play some football. Three receivers in the game. Vince Moore is the extra one on first down. Tony Thompson for a gain of two. Hit first by Sean Cobb, and let's meet the Rebel defenders. Lester will play in the middle. He's 238 pounds, not big. He's a former defensive end. They move him inside. Jacobs and Pritchett. Keep an eye on Pritchett. He is the big play guy, and they will probably even move him into the middle. Linebackers, they're active, they're quick, and they have to play a big part as well. Cobb, one of their leading tacklers. Kent, Hancock outside. Secondary, we're going to see six and seven guys, and as you look at the people that are starting, let me tell you, it's a situational defensive team, a lack of dominating players, so they counter with specialists. It's not unusual to see Ole Miss use 25 guys defensively. Henton Davis is on the field. He's the right tackle Tim spoke of a moment before. Shaken up on the carry by Tony Thompson. You know, Davis was an All-American as a sophomore. And in the weight room, he worked so hard that he got up to 750 pounds squatting. And the coaches had to tell him to cut it out because they thought something in his body would pop. <laughs> he went from 250 pounds to 300 pounds his sophomore year in high school. And how about that game right there? Maryland upsets Virginia. Will that uh, keep the coach there? It sure will help. He's got a meeting Monday afternoon with Andy Geiger, Joe Freeback, the head coach at Maryland. Second and eight for Tennessee. Incompletion intended for Harper. Freeback's team will end the season six and five with that huge victory today against Virginia. That meeting is not really known. We're saying about, we're talking about it now, but he does have a meeting with the new athletic director at Maryland, Andy Geiger, who came from Stanford. And Joe Freeback will sit down and they'll look at the possibilities, they'll look at what they've done, and they'll evaluate the future. Second loss of the year for the Cavaliers. Third and eight for Tennessee. Short of the first. Hit at the 18-yard line by Chris Mitchell. And Philip Kent. Mitchell's wearing the jersey number 38, once worn by Chucky Mullins. Strong play by Mitchell to turn it back in, but then Kent on the pursuit made the big play in the final stop. You get the Courage Award in the spring, and that gives you the right to wear the jersey. That's a tradition they're going to continue through the years. Mitchell makes the play. Burke will have to attempt the field goal. 35 yards out, and Greg Burke converts. That's his 18th field goal made this year, and Tennessee scores on its opening possession. Johnny Majors in his 14th year at Tennessee, the dean of the SEC coaches. We talked to him about how his team would be emotionally today. Emotions at Ole Miss are going to be extremely high because this is the best chance they've had since Johnny Vault days to have glory and to go to the Sugar Bowl. So I think that's going to be a big factor. Get an early uh, uh, start, attacking them, uh, carrying the fight to them, for, so to speak, because if they get some early momentum, uh, they're going to be tough to handle. They'll be tough enough as it is. That's a big key. 
talking about how long it's been for Ole Miss. He mentioned Vaught, of course, KO Dotley back in 1949. Joey Chapman kicks for Tennessee. Ball comes to Brownlee from the 12. Vincent Brownlee out to the 27-yard line and down to John Dockery. You know, Jim, you were talking about Anton Davis. He hurt his uh, knee a little bit before. I talked to the doctor, and he said it's okay. It's ironic. Before the game, I was talking to some of the pro scouts, and they said the big 300-pounder may be the first offensive lineman taken in the draft. Doctor said it looks like he's okay. He's going to try it again. Back to you guys. That's a good report. Tom Luke will start. Perfect 5-0 and this year as a starter. Randy Baldwin, second in the SEC in rushing behind Tony Thompson. Nets three on his first carry. They'll be alternating quarterbacks today. Luke and Russ Shows, but Luke gets the call here. Thick pins the fullback and Randy Baldwin, Tim Brandt spoke of him in the open. Jeffrey Holder and Brownlee are the receivers. And the tight end is Ty J. Armstrong. Second and seven for Ole Miss. Derek Owens is in, along with Eddie Small, but they'll keep it on the ground, running with the quarterback, Luke. And a first down to the 40, a gain of 11. You know, if you're playing for Ole Miss, you've got to enjoy that. Luke puts his head down and runs over the linebacker, Walker. Here's the guys they're playing behind. Pruitt, a scrapping hard worker, knows every trick in the book. Outside of him is Dew and Lindsey. Dew steps up for Herring, who's a little bit injured. And then the tackles, Struther and Lott. They're alternating receivers. The starting group is back in. Camp Roberts is the tight end on first down for the Rebels. The pitch to Baldwin, shakes free, and gains five. Tackled by Ernest Fields and Carrie Bailey. One of the things that Ole Miss has to really think about today is the speed of Tennessee. So what they want to do is let Tennessee just run upfield, let them run out of the play, then come up underneath of them. See Hardy now tries to take the outside. They give him a juke and go around him. You can use that speed, their biggest asset, and use it against them if you use it properly. Second and six. Big pin for maybe a yard. Jim Nance along with Tim Brand and John Dockery. And Tim, let's take a look at the Tennessee defense. Well, Mark Moore's 271 pounds. Bailey's also 254, so they're not that big inside. But again, we go back to their quickness. They are quick. Mims is 223. And outside of him, you've got Kelly, who's 251. He's only a sophomore. Sean Walker in the middle is the most active guy. Great technician. Hardy and Fields are probably the two best. Third down five for Ole Miss. They run it with Big Pin, and he's close to the first down yardage. They're going to measure for it. Ole Miss, eight and one on the year. The only loss was against Auburn. They give it to him. First down, Mississippi. Got to keep in mind, you're looking at an angle there. So it didn't look like he had it, but the nose of the ball was enough for the first. Just underway at the Liberty Bowl. Tennessee got a field goal in its first possession. Now Ole Miss on offense for the first time today. First down, operating right at midfield. Play action by Luke. Going long to Baldwin. Incomplete. Dale Carter came in head hunting. The pass was thrown perfectly. Baldwin never had to break stride, but you will never see a better defensive play from a safety than you saw here. Here comes Carter coming out of his free safety spot and just timed it perfectly. Virtually impossible to make that catch when Carter hits the exact same time as the football. Carter had been questionable at one point this week with an ankle bruise, but he gets the start. Second down, 10. Baldwin. A gain of seven. 
Lincoln and Fields on the tackle. Third and three coming up for Ole Miss. And back down to John Dockery we go. You know, Jim, this is called Ole Miss's 300 series, and it's odd to see split backs and the option run mostly out of that. But Tommy Luke, of course, as you mentioned, is the running quarterback, kind of that Billy Kilmer type of quarterback. And what Ole Miss hopes to do here is their ball control offense, keep it away from the high-powered offense of Tennessee. Third and four, a short four. Looking pass all the way, Luke. Gets away from the heat. Makes the move that picks up the first. You can see why everybody loves him. They say this guy doesn't have an arm. They say he can't run a lick. They say he's banged up and broken down. But I'll tell you this, he is elusive. Look at that. A little pump fake freezes Hardy, and Hardy's an outstanding linebacker. Then he takes it up, knows exactly where the first down marker is, and gets the first. Tom Luke, just a sophomore, led Ole Miss to five straight wins, stepping in for the injured Russ Childs. First down from the Volunteers, 38-yard line. Randy Baldwin gets away from Hardy. And McCleskey makes the hit after a gain of six. Tennessee's secondary really Poor tackling last week against Notre Dame, so they made a change. Lincoln starts, and McCleskey comes in for Floyd Miley. Roderick Lewis will start at strong safety instead of Mark Fletcher, and Dale Carter is the free safety and a good one. You know what they like about Lewis? Lewis is just a freshman. They say he's loud. He's kind of cocky. They like that in the secondary. He's aggressive. He's not afraid of anything, and if he gets beaten, he doesn't care. He comes right back, and the next time it'll intercept you. Marvin Courtney is in at running back, replacing Baldwin on second and four. Luke has to keep on the short side, and the flag flies on the tackle by Sean Walker. Picked up only a yard. Ball is at the 31 of Tennessee. Actually, the play was over. Personal foul against the defense. 15 yards. Well, that's a big one. And that'll move the football inside of the 20-yard line. Here comes the left ear screen now. The late hit. Using the helmet as a weapon. They call that a spear. It's a definite flag. No question about it. Boy, no reason for that at all. That's a vicious mental mistake. It was actually Shazan Bradley who came in on the late hit. The Ole Miss drive continues. First down from the 16. Marvin Courtney lined up in the eye. He gets the pitch too high. This football is picked up and cannot be returned because the fumble did not occur past the line of scrimmage. Roderick Lewis picks up the fumble, and Tennessee will take over from the point of the recovery around the 20-yard line. Luke tried to do this on instinct. As soon as he turned, he saw the pressure and tried to unload it. Got it back a little bit too quickly. Courtney never really had a shot at it. The ball was on him before he could do anything about it. You're looking at coach Billy Brewer in his eighth season at Ole Miss, second longest tenure at the school to John Vaught. He's taken the Rebels to three bowls in his first seven years. The Independence twice last year here at the Liberty. Now here's what the Ole Miss season has been to this point. A loss in the second game against Auburn, 24-10. And since then, they've reeled off seven consecutive victories. Tennessee leads it here. Mid-first, three to nothing. Kelly, play action to Harper at the 25. And Harper out of bounds near the 30, a gain of eight. Talked about the success, Jim, and that graphic right there that Ole Miss has had. They've been ranked 15th by the Associated Press. The coaches poll holds the Rebs in higher esteem, ranks them 11th by UPI. You know, prior to these rankings, Mississippi's been ranked only once since 1976. One week it lasted. That was it because Tennessee beat them in 1986 right here. And that's it. The only time they've been ranked. Second and two. A reverse to Pickens. 
Looking to throw is Pickens. This man can do it all. Looking for Harper. And the underthrown ball was picked off by Godwin. Chauncey Godwin. Slipping around on the ice a little bit in the first series because they were playing Tennessee, but they settled down now and they're starting to play pretty good defense. Never taken by the fake. Amos was right back there, and then the interception was made by Godwin, and they bring it back. Not only are they satisfied with the INT, but then they get some pretty good blocks and bring it all the way back to the 40. Give Chauncey credit for being there. He's had big games in the past. Boy, had a big one against Florida last year with two picks and ran it back for a touchdown. First down, Ole Miss. Thick pen tripped up. McCleskey in the area. I'm not sure whether he didn't just stumble on his own. After a gain of one. Ed Thick pen, second leading rusher for Ole Miss. And he hails from Archie Manning's hometown of Drew, Mississippi. Second down, nine. Luke looking pass all the way. Open man. Eddie Small to the Tennessee 40. Give him 19 on the pass play. How can you not love Tom Luke? He reminds me of Billy Kilmer. They say he can't throw, but he just gets the job done. Look, just sits, 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 and then fires into the hook area. And there's Small just waiting for it. The pass could not have been thrown any better. Old Miss kids love the way Luke plays. He's an overachiever with the heart of the lion. We said that, and his teammates think he hung the moon. But now he'll run it. And Luke picks up about six. Running into Ernest Fields. Good protection up front by Ole Miss. Everybody talked about the strength of this defense, a highly ranked defense for Tennessee. But right now, the offensive line is pretty much having its own way. Second and four. They give it to Baldwin. First down to the 25. Here goes Baldwin. Finally wrestled down at the 22-yard line after a 12-yard run. on the left side gets a pretty good block and opens up this thing for for Baldwin now they'll finesse you they'll trap you they'll run some draws they'll run the option this is not a power team so far the finesse has Tennessee sitting on its heels Baldwin is out Marvin Courtney is in along with Darren Billings in the backfield first down Ole Miss oh what a hit the stick put on by Todd Kelly Courtney got the football and lost three on his first carry. See, again, they tried to run the trap. As soon as the alignment pulled out to go trap the other side, Kelly came free without a blocker. He just came on the hip of the guard that was pulling and came through completely cleanly. Todd Kelly getting the start today for Chuck Smith. Sprained an ankle against Notre Dame. Second and 13. Accepted by Dotson, Dwayne Dotson, a backup, making a leaping interception at the 14-yard line. Ole Miss, two possessions, two turnovers. That was a terrible decision by Luke. We've had three turnovers now in the first 10 minutes of the game. He looks over the middle, but then just tries to unload it and throws off his, his back foot, almost falling away. There was absolutely nothing on it and just threw into coverage. Very poor decision by Luke, and he's played well to this point. Good grab by Dotson, and Tennessee takes over at the 15. Tony Thompson picks up two, running into Sean Cobb. 
We told you when we showed you the lineups that they will take their defensive end, Pritchett, and move him down and put him on the center. Here he is inside, and the reason they do that is because he's a big, strong guy, great low center of gravity. Now, Tennessee will spread you out, as you saw in that formation. They'll use three and four wide receivers, which makes that middle soft, so they put Pritchard in the middle to shore it up. Three receivers in the game on second and nine. Staying with Thompson. Thompson gets away from one man, bouncing around for a first, and a nice run by the SEC's best, a gain of 16. You know who gets a block on this play? Pickens, the wide receiver. Now, he's been spending all his time with the offense. He hasn't been playing much defense. He gets his body in the way, not much of a block, but he took the man out of the play. He got enough of Kevin Ingram to make a difference. Thompson up to 43 yards rushing here in the first. That one just kind of fluttered off the hands of Andy Kelly. Intended for Anthony Morgan, speedster. We've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly in this first period. <laughs> it's 3-0, Tennessee leading Mississippi in the first. Andy Kelly last week against Notre Dame set school records for attempts, completions, and passing yardage in a game. He was 35 of 60 for 399 yards. Johnny Majors told us, however, he was very hurt by a final minute. Interception by Rod Smith of Notre Dame. Very hurt by that, wanting to come back strong today. Here he hands off to Thompson with a flag down at the line. I think they're going to get John Fisher for holding. It's going to be against Tennessee. Holding by the offense during the run. He's eight and second down. You know, when Tennessee comes out in that formation, Jim, Ole Miss has gone to its dime package. They take three down linemen, Kent Pritchard and Tony Brown. They take a strong and weak linebacker led by Cobb and six defensive backs with Todd Sandroni as the hidden safety or what they call the robber. It's almost like a two deep and a six under type look. Right now it's causing some problems for Tennessee. 3.39 left in the first quarter. Second down, 20. Set it up quickly for Morgan, trying to get him some room, but he doesn't find it. Philip Kent was waiting for the wide receiver screen. Only a gain of two. How did you find Kelly's performance last week against Notre Dame? I thought he was outstanding. Threw the ball 60 times, had a career day, completed 35 of them. The only plays he'd love to have back, the two interceptions, and they were really bad decisions, but he had an outstanding day against Notre Dame. Tyrone Ashley in the secondary for Ole Miss. On third and 18, he's going to drop back and maybe punt it. Yes, Kelly can do this. Over the secondary, ball is actually fumbled momentarily. Todd Sandroni picks up the punt at his own 43. Quick kick on third down by Tennessee. We told you Tom Luke, the Mississippi quarterback, is a fierce leader. Here's how he evaluated his talents. Talent-wise, uh, I wouldn't say I was uh, a good quarterback. You know, I'm, I go out and uh, I play different from uh, a usual, you know, usual, I guess, a stereotype quarterback. I, I kind of play with the mentality of, a, I guess, a, a linebacker. I try to anyway. I try to, you know, I don't go out of bounds. I don't slide and things like that. I go out there and uh, play as hard as I can on every play, and hopefully uh, my team will follow in suit and, you know, play as hard as I try to play because, I, I, you know, i got to make up for what I lack as far as passing ability and talent. He also plays baseball at Ole Miss. The Ole Miss baseball coach is Don Kessinger, the old Chicago Cub. Shortstop. First and ten. Luke out of the pocket. And is able to gain yardage. Give him five near midfield. Oh, Smokey looks like he's had a workout today. 
second down. Raccoon hunting dog. You know, a lot of people go, 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 go. like to take a look at old Smokey before the game. Mascot for Tennessee. Second down, five. Courtney is in the back backfield for Ole Miss. He's the pitch man. First down. Down the sideline, may have stepped out. Marvin Courtney. Spotted at the seven. talk about the intangibles that Luke has they say he also takes the extra step on the option which really helps the running back now Courtney takes this around the corner just puts a little juke move and once he gets to the sidelines then it's speed versus speed and he does a good job until the pursuit angle takes over and Carter finally catches Courtney gains 45 and they go to the wishbone series now on first and goal Luke will keep and gain a yard Hit by Ernest Fields. Jim, this wishbone is what they call the 300 series. It's the old wishbone attack. Bill Yeoman, the old coach down at Houston, your alma mater, of course, put it in and brought it along. Then we saw the eye bone, and Fisher DeBerry brought that. But now it looks as if Ole Miss has a new wrinkle to it. They line up in the wishbone, but then they play power football. You'll see like the 3-4 extra power like they run out of the full house. Second and goal. Thick pin has it. Luke trying to give him a block. And maybe loses a yard. Chuck Smith in there now. He did not start today, as we mentioned. But he puts the hit on him. Luke makes the pitch and then runs out there looking for a block. Well, let's see how he does. Let's grade him on it. Here's the pitch back. Now, here comes the extra power. He's got all these blockers in front of him. Luke <laughs> throws. Well, give him an A for effort. Execution is a little bit shaky. Ole Miss has a third and goal from the seventh. This is their third deep penetration of the first quarter. They turned it over the first two times. And with 20 seconds left in the first quarter, they call a timeout. Timeout Ole Miss. Luke comes over to talk to Brewer. Chance to tell you, tomorrow we have a doubleheader day coming your way. It's the Dexter Manley situation. What he meant was called Tagliabue. <laughs> Ole Miss fails to knock it across here on third and goal. We could be seeing their place kicker, Brian Lee, who has really struggled this year. He is three for 12 in field goals and has missed his last six. He was struggling in pregame warm-ups, too. I saw him miss four in a row. Big pin and Baldwin in the backfield on third and goal. Luke with great time. Locks it. Completes it. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Derek Owens. the end zone Dale Carter is down talk about pass protection he had it a lot of people did their jobs on that not only the pass protection but Luke kept moving back there which Luke wouldn't let the defense hone in on him first up front you got pretty good protection then here comes the escapability of Luke. Now, while he's doing this, the receivers are readjusting their routes and skating with them to that side. And there it is in the back of the end zone, Derek Owens. Meanwhile, you see Carter, number 18, the free safety go down for Tennessee. Hurt that ankle last week. It's not a sprain, a deep bruise. He has it heavily taped, and he goes down, and he was the guy that was covering Owens. See him right there with that last-ditch effort is Carter, and he goes down, but here's Luke. 
Well, you talk about a story. Broke his arm last year throwing a fastball for the Ole Miss baseball team and broke his right shoulder in spring practice. Already this season, he's had a pulled hamstring, severe concussion, broken finger. Today, he's playing with his left knee tape to keep his kneecap in place. It's like an old banjo. The strings break, but he just keeps playing well. Brian Lee will attempt the point after. He missed one in the last game. But nails this one. 7-3. Mississippi with nine seconds to go in the first quarter. Wow, that means uh, he may not be ready for Virginia Tech next week. And Moore is backed up by Matt Blunden, a Virginia basketball player with good size and a good arm. Should Sean Moore not be able to go? But in all due respect to Matt, he's not Sean Moore. How about Ricky Waters? He's really coming on here in November. Race for 174 yards last week through the Tennessee defense and two touchdowns. Gets the Irish up early against Penn State. Carter now was shaken up on the touchdown pass, walked off under his own power, now returns for the kickoff. And it comes to Carter at the goal line. Actually, that was Anthony Morgan on the return, a gain of 28 yards. And that will end the first quarter. 7-3 Mississippi will return to the Liberty Bowl after this message and a word from your local state. We're back for the start of the second quarter. And the first quarter stats show Mississippi with a 2-1 to one edge in both total yardage and time of possession. Also the advantage on the scoreboard, 7-3 Ole Miss. Jim Nance along with Tim Brandt and John Dockery from the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. It's a neutral site, although it counts officially as a home game for Mississippi. Ole Miss has been a ball control type attack all year. Also been a field position football team. This offense has been able to capitalize on great field position. 17 runs, five passes for Ole Miss. They wanted more of a balance than that. with Amsler on the first play of the second quarter. Tackled by Reggie Parrott after a gain of six. Let's go back to John Dockery. Jim, if you look behind me on the bench, you'll see number 18, Dale Carter. Nothing serious there. He landed in the end zone, got the wind knocked out of him. Trainer said he should be okay and back in the game uh, when they go on defense, Tennessee, that is. Back to you guys. Tennessee faces second and four. Foles and Amsler out of the eye. They pitch it to Amsler. Oh, he hit at the 37-yard line by Reggie Parrott. And a flag on the field. The flag would have to be holding against the offense because Parrott's hit was perfectly legal, well-timed, and I mean delivered. So they'll move Tennessee back. How'd you like that hit? It's one of the best I've seen this year. Watch Parrott will come out of the right of your screen. He's number 47. And he's going to be just a blur. Here comes Amsler and bam. Oh. Tuck the tail, sky the eyes, and drive him right back under the chin to the ground. Pancaking. Backing up Tennessee to the 20 on second and 18. Amsler comes right back with the football. And gains six. Gary Abide on the tackle. Amsler now playing in place of Tony Thompson. There have been a lot of injuries this year at Tennessee at tailback. Of course, first and foremost, Chuck Webb. Well, Reggie Cobb left, then Chuck Webb got hurt. Henson had a knee injury. J.C. Smith was banged up. He's now back, so they have been thin there. Third down, 12. Trailing 7-3 in the second. Vince Moore. Short of the first as Chauncey Godwin held on. Fourth and two for the Bulls. Joey 
Ronnie Chapman in to punt for Tennessee. Craig Martin snaps it to him. Driving punt to Vincent Brownlee. Written down at the 32-yard line by Preston Warren. A 40-yard punt and eight yards. Well, of course, Memphis is known as the city of the blues. Sun Records is here. Jerry Lee Lewis was discovered at Sun Records. So was the guy named Elvis. Right now, Mississippi has Tennessee caught in a trap, I guess you could say. They've got the tempo in their favor, leading 7-3 in the second. Sing a couple verses of caught in a trap. <laughs> Before the ball was snapped, offensive team in the neutral zone, five-yard penalty, still first down. Jim, you know, as long as the game goes on like this, Mississippi's going to gain more confidence, and it's going to make it tougher on Tennessee. The Doxter took a tour of Graceland yesterday. He enjoyed it, too. Came back with all those tails and all those tunes. Had his hair slicked back when he came back. <laughs> he did. First down, 15. Randy Baldwin, big pin gives him a block. Baldwin goes out of bounds at the 37-yard line. A gain of 11. What do you think of Randy Baldwin here early? He looks strong. First time we've seen him other than tape. We've watched a lot of tape on him this past week. Had an opportunity to sit down and chat with him. He's an intriguing young guy. But he's big, he's strong, he moves well, and he's confident. What a block he gets by Thigpen right here. Watch Thigpen 32 clean out the corner, and then Baldwin just takes it around. Red Parker told him how the cow ate the cabbage. <laughs> Said he had to work at it. I wasn't sure what that meant when he told us, but he's taken to it pretty well. Second and four, running again, short of the first. Dwayne Dotson on the tackle. Billy Brewer says he's the best running back ever at Ole Miss. He was the MVP here at the Liberty Bowl when the Rebels beat Air Force last December. He rushed for 177 yards on this field, and some think he may be leaving Mississippi after his junior year and turning professional. Although he told us he was going to stay and come back. Third and two. Luke will run for it. He has it easily into Tennessee territory and fumbles. Recovered by Jeremy Lincoln. The hit and the strip by Roderick Lewis. He is doing so many things right, you hate to see him turn the football over, but this is turnover number three. Reads the defense, sees the crease, lets everybody run their way out, and then he scrambles. But then here comes the hit and knocks it loose. Just didn't protect the football. Ball appeared to be coming loose before he even was hit. It did. Thompson knocked down by Doug Jacobs. Three turnovers now. Tennessee has been able to corral. Check the football here before. Nope. That angle you couldn't tell if it started to come free early. I don't think it makes any difference. That's a big time hit by Lewis. You know, we talked about his attitude and the kind of guy he is. Loves to hit hard in the secondary. Says that makes him feel better than anything that he else could do. Second and five. Andy Kelly rolling and firing and completing it to Anthony Morgan for a Tennessee first down. No Colorado closing out the regular season in style. Georgia Tech remains unbeaten. Only team that can claim that. First down, run by Thompson. All kinds of room. Hurdles past the defender and finally goes down at the 30. What a move by five foot six inch running back Tony Thompson for a gain of 18. Poles 
gives him a pretty good block once he gets into the, the seam. He eludes another block. Now here comes the leap, the hurdle. Looked like a high hurdle on that one. And had he gotten his feet and his balance back, he had a touchdown, but he just couldn't stay up. He has 66 yards rushing here in the first half. Comes right back again. Sprinting for eight this time. It's update time. Let's freaking there at Notre Dame. And that touchdown went right at Todd Light. Highly touted, but he gave up a touchdown last week right over him and was burned on that one. Tony Thompson on the run. Near the first down yardage inside of the 20. Set of the day, Maryland over Virginia. Jim, this is a dominating drive right now by Tennessee. After the first period, they had six runs, six passes, a balanced attack, but they've gone back now just to establish that dominance more to the run. 13 runs, seven passes. Let that offensive line, the one they call the TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority, go ahead and dominate. You see, they get the first down here. Let them go out and establish themselves against this old mess defense. Seven three, Mississippi over Tennessee. Just inside of 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. Anton Davis has returned at right tackle for the Volunteers. Staying with the effective Tony Thompson. Chris Mitchell was on him first. Sean Cobb finished him off. Sean Cobb, the leading tackler, number 44 right there in the middle of your screen, has great pursuit on this. Mitchell turns him back in, and then Cobb comes and finishes up. He's got 97 tackles on the year, 3.5 grade point average in business. He's a graduate student, Dean's List, not real fast. He's a little bit short, but I'll tell you, he plays. Second and seven, Thompson. Hit again by Cobb. He's their leading tackler. Improving it here. Danny Boyd helped out after a four-yard gain. How about Cobb's story about driving around with his license plate? He's from Tennessee, from Jackson, Tennessee. You see now old Mrs. Turnovers have not really cost him. Cobb's license plate, Tennessee license plate, says Cobb 44. Everyone thinks. He's Reggie Cobb. They roll down the window and say, hey, Reggie, how you doing? <laughs> Tony Thompson leaping near the first. I don't think he got it. <laughs> Cobb was in on the mix again, along with Roger Hancock. Going to be fourth down. <laughs> Fourth and even more than a yard. We'll call it fourth and two. Tennessee's going for it. Amsler, Coles, and Thompson in the full house backfield. Amsler. Didn't get it. Ingram and Jim Lins make the Rebels stop. Talk about running to the football. First of all, you've got to make contact. You don't want to give any ground here. Then you run to the football and get support from your linebackers, your secondary, to get everybody to fill so he can't run forward and get that first down. On this day when the, the game is being played up in Cambridge, Massachusetts, I thought it might be rather appropriate to illuminate just how Old Miss got their colors. You see, there was a controversy some hundred years ago, and finally a manager, after much argument, said, and I quote, that a union of the Crimson of Harvard and the Navy Blue of Yale might be harmonious. Rather civilized, don't you think, guys? <laughs> Although I don't think my guys from Harvard actually fought that fiercely today. Oh, my goodness, look at that score. Whew. The insipid gall and brazen audacity of a Harvard man to make such a 
a statement. I thought it was rather noble of him, though, to at least give the score. <laughs> His team lost. First down after the defensive stand by the Rebels, starting from their own 10, leading 7-3. Baldwin gets the corner and bumped out after three by Jeremy Lincoln. Baldwin is from Griffin, Georgia, and is second in the SEC in rushing behind Tony Thompson. Actually leads the conference in yards per carry, over six yards per rush. Been the SEC Player of the Week three times this year. Second and seven. Luke again will keep it. And he's about a yard shy, maybe two. Midway second quarter, 7-3 Mississippi. At stake, the driver's seat for the Sugar Bowl. An Ole Miss win today, then a victory over Mississippi State next week. And the Rebels would return then to the Sugar Bowl for the first time in over two decades. Third down and two. the option. Luke keeps it. Gets the first down. After a gain of five. Hit by Hardy. Gutty player. Been banged up all year. Continues to play. Continues to produce. Look at him here. Runs the option flawlessly. Sees the block. Cuts it up. There's nobody there for flood control. So he takes it up and meets the linebacker Hardy head on. He talks about that linebacker mentality. He's got it. Went head up with Hardy. Daryl Hardy. On first down, Tim, a new look. They bring in three receivers. Baldwin is out there as a receiver. They stay on the ground with thick pin as they spread the defense. Good yardage. Give them 10 yards before Ernest Fields makes the tackle. All right, now Tennessee, Jim, has not seen Ole Miss use that trip formation. Three wide outs, the same side. They use Baldwin out there as a receiver, trying to expose as many of his talents as possible. See how Tennessee reacts and how they adjust. You pick that up very nicely. And then once they do adjust, they key on Baldwin and run it straight up the middle. Stretching it out. First down, Mississippi. Old Miss came into this game knowing that it had to throw someone first down, at least make Tennessee respect it, which will keep the Vols from being so aggressive on run defense. So far, they've got 23 carries for 144 yards. And they passed the ball five times. Slot formation to the right on first and 10. Option left with Baldwin. He's got room to Tennessee territory at the 46. <laughs> 20-yard run for Randy Baldwin. Watch the corners get blocked out. These are the guys that have containment out here. All three now will get blocked out of this play. They'll come, they'll hook him. Watch, you run around him, then force him back inside. All right, there's the contained man. Pitch it outside, then you ride the corner right out. And Baldwin takes it up. We told you he got off to a slow start. Billy Brewer, Red Parker sat him down. They talked with him. Told him how to play without the ball. 13 touchdowns in the last six games. He's responded. Luke responds on the pass play. Derek Owens, who caught the touchdown, goes across the middle and gets tackled near the 20. A 25-yard game. Again, it's play action that sets this up. Three-step drop, throw it over the middle. Then here comes Owens. That's his 12th catch of the year. He averages 17 yards a catch. That touchdown in this game was his first of the season. Here he sets up another first down situation. Big pin inside the 20. A gain of three yards. <laughs>
just like Notre Dame came in and used a lot of finesse because they didn't think size-wise and speed-wise they could play with Tennessee. They used finesse. They used some mirrors. They keep them off balance. Tennessee's defense is coached to get upfield. Let them get upfield and ride them out. Call it second and eight for Ole Miss. 4.38 to go in the second. Luke keeps tackled by Daryl Hardy. Bring up third and six for the Rebels. Jim, we mentioned that Ole Miss is a field position football team, and they've capitalized on that, especially inside the 20. Now, they have had a lot of turnovers inside the 30 this year, five, I think it's six of them now, but they've also scored a lot, 18 touchdowns, three field goals in 30 trips inside the 20. Luke gets the pass away, and it is incomplete. Almost intercepted by Jeremy Lincoln. Intended for Vincent Brownlee. Now the place kicker will come onto the field as we take a look at it. But Lincoln might have the INT. Brownlee may have stripped it loose. So it's a 34-yard field goal attempt from a young man who has not made in over a month and a half, and he misses again. Now 3 of 13 on the season, Brian Lee. Lincoln came out of high school as one of the number one prospects in the country. He stays right there with Brownlee all the way in his hip pocket, almost has the INT, great defensive play. My heart goes out to this kid right here, Brian Lees, just a sophomore. Last year, he was na named as the SEC All-Freshman Team. He was 10 of 19, but he's struggling this year. Jim Nance told you he's 3 for 13 this year, just missed that one. That could change the entire strategy of this game if they come down with a field goal to either win it or tie it. They may have to go in short yardage. He missed seven in a row Thursday at practice down at Ole Miss. I watched him pregame. He missed five in a row. His confidence right now, Jim, is broken. Tennessee takes over, trailing 7-3. Kelly connects for a gain of 25 to his tight end, Mark Adams. Andy Kelly coming to the line. He's from Dayton, Tennessee. Little town between Knoxville and Chattanooga. Running it with Thompson. He's hit by Jacobs after a gain of three. Of course, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. It's the 20th consecutive year. The Chevrolet folks have been involved in this scholarship program. $1,000 will be donated to the general scholarship fund of each school. Second and seven for Tennessee. Kelly hits Reeves. And that is near the first. It appears to be it. Yes, it is. First down, Volunteers driving here with 2.41 left in the second quarter. You heard earlier John Dockery talk about the game. Harvard and Yale. The little brown jug was... Again, claimed today by Michigan. First and ten balls. Thompson. First down, Tennessee. An 11-yard gain. Sean Cobb cut him under. Playing for the Indian War Drum at Kansas, and Missouri leads it. Coach Bob Stoll's team up by 10 in the fourth. And the victory bell game between USC and UCLA tied in the second. Here at 7-3 Ole Miss. First down for Tennessee in the second quarter. Oh, my, into the chains. 
And a down marker. Pete Harris. Pummel Kelly. They call this guy the Prince of Darkness because he's knocked guys out of games before, puts their lights out. These are the kind of hits he likes. Now, that is a legal hit. He was still in bounds, but boy, I guarantee you Kelly got up feeling that one. Coaches say he's talented, but at times inconsistent. 77 tackles on the year. Missed a meeting last week, so didn't start. But he is playing, and I'll tell you what, by not starting him, looks like he's a little bit fired up. Mm. He knows the difference between come here and sick him. <laughs> you got to have those sayings like that down here and in the south. Good old-fashioned shootout today. Liberty Bowl in Memphis. And it's going to be second and nine. Kelly is just fine. He's in the huddle. Back on his feet swiftly. <laughs> to Ambler. Breaking free in his way to the eight yard line Greg Amsler 24 yards give Roy Waters the umpire right in your screen credit for the pick look at this just comes right off of him Amsler uses the umpire which is legal he's part of the field as a as a pick man separates himself from the defense and then Amsler big strong guy 232 pound fullback just uses that body weight carrying tacklers down inside the 10. Tennessee calls timeout, facing first and goal for the Vols with three receivers to the left. Rolling left is Kelly, hitting Harper at the five and short of the goal line. Former high jumper, former high jumping champion of the SEC, trying to go airborne for the end zone. Watch how this tackle is saved by Cobb, though, 44. He'll come up. Mitchell gets there first. Actually, it's Mitchell that saves the tackle, saves the touchdown. Godwin puts him up in the air. See, he has to try to go over him, and then here he comes. It's a pretty good lick right there, too. Now under a minute to go before the half. Trailing 7-3, Tennessee looking for the lead. Thompson is stopped short. Sean Cobb and Artis Ford. The key in any short yardage defense or goal line defense is to get low. You want to get low, you want to penetrate. You want to get under everybody else. The linebackers come up top and fill. This time they get low, they grab his leg, get him before he goes airborne. He can't get over the top. Facing third down, Tennessee calls top. The sidelines with Johnny Majors. His team faces third and goal from just outside the one-yard line, trailing 7-3 right before the half. Three receivers to the right. Amsler the single back. Kelly to Harper. Tennessee takes the lead. Harper's sixth touchdown catch of the year. He had two last week against Notre Dame. Nine straight completions for Andy Kelly. Now Burke on the extra point. Volunteers lead it by a field goal. Not only does he have nine straight completions, but he's 11 of 13. He's as sharp as a quarterback can get right now. They play him a little bit to the inside, so he goes to the outside. And then all you have to do is just get to the end zone. Boom, put your head down and go in. Harper looked a little bit like he was dancing on a light bulb there. Like the helmet was popping off. Got to be more forceful. Touchdown, Tennessee. Are you a little bit surprised at the tempo of this game? Well, it's, it's exactly what uh, Ole Miss had hoped for. 
And the Rebels actually have had chances get away from them with three turnovers, all in Tennessee territory and a missed field goal. I think if either one of us had walked into this stadium and said all those turnovers by Ole Miss in the first half and they'd only be down 10-7 at the half, would have shocked both of us. Tim Brandt and John Dockery. I'm Jim Nance from the Liberty Bowl. Andrea and Mike Francesa coming up at halftime with scores and highlights from today in college football. Tennessee and Mississippi controlling their own destiny. Looking for the Sugar Bowl berth from the SEC. Ashley finally gets the handle at the 10 and gets only to the 14-yard line. Alvin Harper sending wishes back to Frostproof, Florida. Now this is right now the way it shapes up in the run for the Sugar Bowl, but again, Mississippi and Tennessee are the only two who can control their own destiny. Ole Miss wins its last two. They're headed to New Orleans. If Tennessee wins its last three, we have Kentucky and Vanderbilt still on the schedule. Then the Vols would be going back to New Orleans. Flag down. There was movement in the backfield as they set up in their wishbone formation before the half. Marvin Courtney may have moved. He ran the football. That penalty will stop the clock with 32 seconds left. Tennessee still has a timeout remaining. Illegal motion by the offense, five-yard penalty, be first down 15. You've got Ole Miss backed up so far here, although there's not much time with 32 seconds left. You may want to take that timeout after the next play, see what happens, just try to force something. 32 seconds left in the second quarter. Courtney again, dashing across the 10, and a gain of three. Vols appear content to let the clock run, and that most likely was the last play of the first half. That'll make Ole Miss happy, too. Backed up this far, just let it run out, get into the locker room, only three down. with illusions of running some 80 yards before the half. <laughs> That's the end of the first half. Oh, back in time, it was 1969 the last time these two squared off when a lot was riding on it like today. In fact, back in 69, they were playing for the Sugar Bowl berth. Tennessee entered the game undefeated, ranked number three in the nation. Ole Miss was five and three and a two touchdown underdog. You just saw Archie Manning throw the touchdown pass to Riley Myers. An old Archie, he's a legend around these parts. He would later throw another one to Floyd Franks as Ole Miss pounded Tennessee that day, 38 to nothing behind Archie Manning. Similar stakes today, the winner of course, will be in the driver's seat to go to the Sugar Bowl. Archie Manning is here in attendance. He can't put on a uniform and lead Ole Miss back, but can they come back against Tennessee? I think right now they're in great shape. They got away with three turnovers in the first half. They deferred. They've got the ball coming back to them. They still only trail by three. You know, they came in. They know they haven't been in this position since Archie played. Lanky Redhead got everything done when he was there. I tell you what, right now they believe that they can beat Tennessee, and I think they're in pretty good shape. All right, Timmy, we're getting ready for the second half. To this message. CBS Sports coverage of today's CFA game is sponsored by Toyota's quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Hewlett Packard laser jet printers, they'll get you noticed. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, remember no when to say when. Tennessee will be kicking to Ole Miss to start the second half. And just a short while ago, John Dockery spoke with coach Billy Brewer of Ole Miss. Well, one thing we got to do, which we haven't done all year, and that's beat ourselves. We had two fumbles and interception there in the, in the first half that really just killed us. That we lost. We didn't get any production out of it all, point-wise. And right now we're down. We're down three. So uh, I, I think you know the football team has just got to come back and play well and play back within themselves again. They know Tennessee is a great football team. 
one other note from the interview with Coach Brewer. He said Brian Lee, he'll stay with his place kicker. This game could come down to a field goal attempt from the young man who has made only three of 13 this season and has missed on his last seven field goal tries. I think he was confirming what we were speculating about at halftime, and that's the fact that Ole Miss has to feel pretty good about itself right now with the three turnovers, getting the football here and only down three. Joey Chapman drills it. Brownlee retrieves and downs it for a touchback. Mississippi will start from the 20 in the second half. And let's check out their drives in the first stanza. Their third possession, they took it in for a score. It's a touchdown pass from Tom Luke to Derek Owens. You know what that indicates? It indicates that Ole Miss was able to move the football against Tennessee. They don't beat themselves. They're in pretty good shape. Did not punt in the first half, Ole Miss. And Luke has been the quarterback the whole way, although we expected to see Russ Shows as well. Baldwin losing three on the first play of the second half. Ernest Fields comes up. Now, the last three games for the Rebels, all victories. They have failed to score in the second half. But one of the games, Arkansas State, they had compiled 42 points in the first two quarters. Vanderbilt, they held on the win. And at LSU, they got up early and again did not score in periods three and four. Second and 13, Luke rolling. Sliding about five yards short of the first. Tommy Luke told us he never slides. He says he's got the mentality of a linebacker, but he made the right decision that time. Get down, don't take the injury. He's been banged up a lot this year. Still has the gain. Positive yardage, get down, get back in the huddle and come back. Brownlee and Holder to the left on third down and five. It's one of those things that I think Billy Brewer is talking about. You don't want to beat yourself. You want to come out. You want to play mistake-free football. You want to be aggressive, but you don't want to make the little silly mistakes like that. We've already seen one of the adjustments that Tennessee has made. When you run the option defensively, you've got to think of three things right now. You've got to think of the dive man, the quarterback, and the pitch man. Third down and 10 for Ole Miss. Taking and falling is Luke. Under pressure, Terry Bailey. A two-yard loss, and it's fourth and 12. Outstanding defensive series for Tennessee. They're starting to pinch a little bit from the outside, more contain conscious. They weren't in the first half, and it cost them on the option a couple of times. First Mississippi punt of the day, Charles Childers. He's had one block this year. He'll punt to Dale Carter. And it's a good one. Carter from his 40. Backing, waiting. He's not going anywhere. He'll lose three on the return. Tennessee will get the football. We spoke of Archie Manning at halftime. The pride and hero of Mississippi even had his own song, The Battle of Archie. They try to make a tackle. They wonder where he went. Archie Superman and should run for president. He wears that number 18 for the big bad red and blue. to have Archie Manning with us in the booth. Archie, I was uh, living in New Orleans when you were playing for Ole Miss and hear that song all the time. Yeah, I guess you still hear it, huh? You were just a little boy, I tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, so, uh, yeah. 
It Fire. seems like, Archie, the legend only continues to grow. People have been mighty nice to me, Jim. It's a great day for Ole Miss right here. Big crowd in Memphis. Here they're facing Andy Kelly, and he zips it incomplete intended for Carl Pickens. Chauncey Godwin on the coverage, and what about the way Ole Miss has played here today, Arch? Well, you got to be impressed with the way they moved the football. Obviously, they had a good plan in the first half and uh, moved the ball every time down the field. Just uh, unfortunately for the Rebels, uh, didn't get it in the end zone enough or points on the board. But hopefully being stopped on this first drive won't take the momentum out of them. It's kind of up to Tennessee now, I think. Tennessee faces second and 10. Thompson out of the eye gets the carry. Flag down. This will probably wipe out the run by Thompson. It was a gain of eight, tackled by Chris Mitchell. Jim, I'm a little bit older than you, so I go back a ways with Archie. I've known him pretty well, and I tell you, as great a quarterback as Archie was, he's even a better person. Quality yeah. individual. I really appreciate that, Jim. Tim. Archie, how uh, active are you still with the Ole Miss program? Well, of course, I live in New Orleans, and uh, I try to stay as close to it as I can. Uh, I got boys growing up. I like for them to see the Rebels play, so uh, I, I announced the Saints games, as you know, so I, I probably don't get to see them play but about three or four times a year. I have a football camp up there, though, and uh, good friends with Billy Brewer and all the coaching staff, and uh, uh, we're just, everyone, we're really, really proud of the Rebels this year. So after the penalty against the Volunteers, it's second down and 20. Another flag falls as they throw it across the middle to Amsler. A short gain of five. See the flag down again. Ole Miss went to that dime package they brought in for this game against Tennessee, and it's been effective. Archie, I want to ask you, what does a successful program and season like Mississippi is experiencing once again like back in your days what does it mean to the state uh, I don't think you can measure it I just think uh, it's been a long dry run and uh, everyone still as you know in the South loves football and uh, it's a great conference the Southeastern Conference we've kind of been in the lower echelon for many years and to climb up and have a good year like this it's just uh, it's unbelievable what it means to be on TV with you guys today it's just it's great for the school and everyone they decline the penalty in third and 15, complete to Adams, short of the first. And Ole Miss will get the football back. You think we may be seeing the other quarterback here before it's all over, Russ Schaus? I wouldn't be surprised to see him to see him in here. You know, I never really advocated a two-quarterback system, but I think these two guys are perfect for it. And if Russ maybe has a little better arm, I'm not sure anybody runs a football team better than I've seen Tommy Luke, though. What a courageous young guy, huh, Tim? He really is. I like him to do a Billy Kilmer type. Yeah, I'll tell you how, how old I am, though, that both their fathers played up at Ole Miss when I did. <laughs> Brownlee on the return and loses yardage on the return. Back to the 20. Archie, a pleasure to visit with you. Thanks so much, Jim. Good, Good luck you. to Good you. Good to see you. Thank you. We'll be back. Ole Miss with the football. Tennessee leading it over Ole Miss 10-7. And they're staying at quarterback with Tom Luke on this series. He's rushed for 70 yards in the game for the Rebels. The Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee is the site. Luke to Baldwin. Makes the cut to pick up extra yardage, about a yard shy of the first. Tackle by McCleskey. Jim, right now I think that's a good decision by Brewer to stick with Luke. Not only 70 yards rushing, as you mentioned, but he's 4 for 7, 57 yards passing. The only thing he has to do is protect the ball a little bit more. They've been moving the football. We illustrated that. We showed you that. But he has to hold on to the football, alleviate the turnovers, and Mississippi's going to be in good shape. First down. So Baldwin actually gets the extra move to pick up the necessary yardage. 10.40 to go in the third quarter. Billy Brewer of Columbus, Mississippi. Two-time SEC Coach of the Year, and I would have to think on his way to getting that honor again this year.
Big pin for a yard. Butts heads with Kerry Bailey. This is the way Mississippi's been running. They've gone to the left side 12 times, 103 yards. The middle they've stayed away from pretty much. Outside on the right, nine times, 58 yards. So they've been going left-handed. Most teams are right-handed, but they've come around from the left. Second down and nine. Incomplete. Almost caught by Eddie Small. Let's take it down to the sidelines with John Dockery. Uh, thank you, Jim. You know, togetherness is the byword here at Ole Miss, and no coach is closer to those players than Billy Brewer. As a matter of fact, he, his wife, Kay, and their two dogs actually live in Bruiser Canaan Hall, the athletic dorm. So as Billy would quip, he'd say, hey, I don't have to find out where my players are. All I do is go down the hall and say, turn down the music a little bit. Billy Brewer, close to his players. <laughs> Can't get any closer than living with them in the dorms. Third and nine. And they run it with Baldwin. They surprise Tennessee. They pick up the first. A gain of 14. Throw when they think you're going to run. Run when they think you're going to throw. I don't know if we've talked about him enough. Just watch him. Baldwin came out of Holmes Community College. Become a head coach. Billy Brewer calls their leading guy. Best running back in Ole Miss history. A lot of people are concerned whether he'll come out and go to the NFL, but he says he's staying. He's coming back next year to play for Ole Miss. Carter bruised up again. Ankle injury carrying over from the Notre Dame game. Second time he's been shaken up. Pitch it. Big pen on first down. The fullback rumbles to the 40 of Tennessee in a first down. 15 yards. Big Ben's a 225-pounder, runs high, blocks great. He'll play till he drops. He's tough. And that tough is spelled with a capital bloody nose. <laughs> hey, with uh, Carter out, David Bennett has replaced him in the secondary at Tennessee. First down for the Rebels. Daryl Hardy picks off Luke. Fourth turnover of the day for Ole Miss. And the second time Luke has been intercepted. It's amazing. There's absolutely no consistency here. He moves the football, makes the big plays, and then turns around and makes a poor decision to throw. Never sets, throws off balance. The receiver's down already, and then just throws into the linebacker, Daryl Hardy. Tell you what, after he got intercepted, too, they came over and tagged him a little bit, let him know they were there. Thompson. We Hit showed by. you a minute ago why they've been going to the left all day. Part of it's because of Hardy. All right, this is after the interception. Look at Luke. Luke said, all right, wait a minute. And here comes the pop. That's Chuck Smith getting a lick on him. Second and seven, you see now, Ole Miss, four turnovers, only one committed by Tennessee. <laughs> Kelly underneath, second reception of the day for Reeves, and it gains eight. Good for a first down for the balls. Good protection for Kelly. Everybody's standing up their man, just dancing with a little bit while he unleashes the ball. Pruitt. We're midway, third quarter. 10-7 Tennessee. First down carry by Roland Coles. Gains only a yard. Jim Lenz on the hit. Let's get a report. Uh, Doc, how is Dale Carter? You know, Jimmy, I just talked to him uh, for a moment. He said someone came by and stepped on his ankle, number two, he said. But he said he's fine. He'll be back in. He's ready to play.
Carter is really the man who makes it work on defense for Tennessee. Emotionally, he is something else. Aggressively, too, he adds to that team. You see the flag as Kelly comes out of the pocket and finds Poles. Moves it into Mississippi territory at the 45, a gain of nine. But we'll check the flag. Before that loss last week to Notre Dame, Tennessee had won 25 straight games. Illegal motion on the offense, repeat the second down. 25 straight games in November, December, or January. A streak that had gone all the way back to a Sun Bowl game against Maryland. 1983, I believe. I remember it well. It's a pretty good record post-October. Hoping to start another streak today. Leading by a field goal in the third. Second and 14, Kelly fires. Hits Pickens. Here he is. Right at the 50. That's about three yards short of the first. A gain of 11. Jim, I don't care who you're playing against, whether they're good or bad. If you turn the ball over that many times, eventually it's going to come back and burn you. The Ole Miss now has to give Tennessee a lot of different looks like they did in the first half. It's a defense with limited speed, so it tries to force you into certain things by alignment, limiting the offense, thus negating the talent advantage that Tennessee has. Third down at three. the option the pitch to Amsler and he picks up the first down Jeff Carter bumped him out but not until he picked up five easily getting the first Tennessee that time came back to their dime package they loaded up to the wide side of the field now Kelly has an alternative play every time he comes to the line of scrimmage he says check with me he reads the defense and either sticks with the play called or audibleizes. But it's always his choice. He came up that time, saw they were cheating to the wide side, audibleized to the option to the backside, and got enough. First and 10, Tennessee and Ole Miss territory. Kelly, who's on fire, throws the safe route to Ampler. Takes a couple of guys to bring him down, doesn't it? Pritchett and Jacobs. Jarum. He scored Amsler the final touchdown last year against Ole Miss. Tennessee won that game 33-21, but it was uh, really even going into the final quarter. And now you see Russ Shows is warming up and appears ready to take over at quarterback next time Mississippi gets the football. Big to Thompson, setting them up to go long. Pickens is out there. Will he make the catch? No, batted away. Good play by Danny Boyd. Danny Boyd, 6-1. Pickens, outstanding high jumper, 6-2. Boyd plays this one and goes up and gets it at his highest point. They say he's a good technician, fundamentally sound. He has given up some big plays this year because of his lack of speed, but put himself in a spot that time where he could make the play. He was up there. Third and four. That was only the fourth incompletion of the day for Kelly. Gets the first to Reeves. At the 31 of Ole Miss. Guys up front never get enough credit. The offensive linemen, they're giving Kelly all kinds of time. McRae's been battling with Pritchett. Been doing an outstanding job there with support from Miss Linsky. And Fisher's doing a good job in the middle. Morgan and Moore at the top of your screen on first and ten. Amsler gets the run. Runs into Anthony Morgan. And the defender, Chauncey Godwin, the gain of seven. Thank you. 
Well, the sun just dropped out of sight, and the temperature dropped about 10 degrees. Getting chilly. Second down, four. Slot formation to the right. Kelly feels the pressure and leans forward. I believe he may have the first. Depending on the spot. Well, they'll say it's, what, third down, third and short? It is third down. Did not get it. They've spot the football outside of the 21-yard line. Jim, something has to give here. Tennessee averages 37 points a game, number one in the Southeast Conference. The Rebs have only allowed 17 a game, but something now has to break. Inches shy of a first on third down. Flag is down, a great defensive play. Doug Jacobs came in first on Amsler. And then Sean Cobb wrote him down. Offside by the defense, five yard penalty, first down. That'll set up Tennessee from the 16 yard line. Billy Brewer has led the Rebels now to their first back-to-back -back winning seasons since 1970 and 71. They're, of course, assured of that winning season this year, 8-1 and one coming into this game. You set it down. Tony Thompson getting outside. To the 8. A gain of 8 for Tony Thompson. Billy Brewer's really struggled against Tennessee. He's one and six against the Vols as a coach. Although he was two and one as a player at Ole Miss. He'd like to be out there right now, I think. Played for Johnny Vaught. Tony Thompson's within two yards of the century mark. Second down and two, and a timeout called by the Mississippi defense. Two minutes and change left in the third quarter. Tennessee. This is the key offside penalty against Ole Miss. Here's the guy right here. Take a look at his hand with the ball. Now, when he pulls the ball away, you'll see it's in the neutral zone. Costly penalty. Kept the drive alive for Tennessee. Now they're inside the 10. Everyone will remember on that third and short play, they stuffed Amsler. Cobb rode him back. But the infraction set him up with a first down. They do run to the football. Fill fast. 10-7, Tennessee. Second two from the eight-yard line. Tony Thompson has the first down at the three-yard line. That puts him over 100. Major's trying to get him to hurry up. The play clock now down underneath 14 seconds. First and goal for the balls. Flag down. Hamsler does not get back to the line of scrimmage. Flag from the far side, however. Well, they got the ball off one time, barely. It was snapped with three seconds left on the 25-second clock. Again, it's against Mississippi. Johnny Majors. Defense is lining up in the neutral zone. They'll be first down. There you go again in that neutral zone. Take it down inside the two now. Maybe on the far right side. First and goal. Amsler. 
bit shy of the goal line. Hancock and company on the tackle. Short yardage, you want to get as close to that football as you possibly can. Every inch makes a difference because you want to get low and penetrate. Try to establish a new line of scrimmage, a yard deep in the offensive backfield. Consequently, they're lining up so close, they're cheating a little bit and getting caught. Second and goal. Will they launch Tony Thompson? Here he is. Touchdown, Tennessee! missed a point after this year. He's made all 36 attempts. Gets another one. A 10-point Tennessee lead under a minute to go in the third quarter. 14-play drive. Everybody's cheating in the inside. They're waiting for him to come up and over. Instead, they go and they pick on the corner, try to test the containment outside, and bangs it in. Tony Thompson. Sides against Ole Miss on the point after, and that'll be assessed on the kickoff. That's three in one series. It's a touchdown again. Again, they were cheating everybody inside for the middle, and Thompson just took it to the corner. It's a good call by Johnny Majors. for you from Memphis, Tennessee, and the Vols lead it 17-7. 14th ranked in the country. Mississippi is number 15. Here's the run back by Brownlee. And a good one. Knocked out by Chapman, the kicker. At the 34, we've got an update on there. There has been a quarterback change by Ole Miss. Russ Shouse takes over and comes out firing. Through the hands of his fullback, Thigpen. It's a big kid, six feet, four inches tall. Jimmy's a strong arm quarterback. He also has the ability to run. He's very tall, six foot four, 205 pounder. He's five thrown for five touchdowns and five interceptions. He went nine for 11 in the first half against LSU. He's probably a better athlete than Luke. Gives you a little bit more versatility at that quarterback slot. Second and 10. Giving it to Baldwin. He has the corner. And a first down at the 47-yard line. Tackled by Lincoln after a gain of 13. We've got a double header. BS Sports. We're headed up the road to Atlanta. Looking forward to that one. Buddy and Glanville will tangle. First and ten, final seconds of the third. Diving catch, yes, he says. Holder has it. Gain of nine as the third quarter ends. A ten-point lead for Tennessee, and our coverage will continue from Memphis after this message and the word city of Memphis Tennessee one of these teams will be feeling the blues after this one's over they both have high hopes of winning this one and running out with victories the rest of the way and heading to New Orleans in the Sugar Bowl we start the fourth with Tennessee leading by 10 but Ole Miss is driving second and one from the Vols 43 Shows hit by Moore and Bailey 
Be close to the first. Today's official attendance, 66,000 plus. It's a new Liberty Bowl record. A new stadium record here at the Liberty Bowl. 66,000. A little more than an hour drive from the Mississippi campus in Oxford. Of course, Tennessee had to fly over from Knoxville and the eastern portion of the state. First and ten, Shows picks up the first. it under gets to the 40 to gain two yards you heard Archie Manning say earlier that both Luke and Chow's fathers played with him at Ole Miss well Russ's father Hank was a tight end and captain of the 1968 Ole Miss team that went to the Liberty Bowl right here on this field and he caught a touchdown pass to Mr. Chow's from Archie Manning Luke looks on on second and eight and up the middle first by Baldwin and a gain of six. You know, as good and as talented as this Tennessee defense is, there are only two seniors on the entire defense and only one starts. Went from last in the league and pass defense to number one in the nation since Larry Lacewell took over this defense. Fairly complicated. It's a check and change all the time. A big third and two for Ole Miss. Big Ben has it. And look at him. Tumble inside of the 24-yard line. A gain of 11. Hit by Roderick Lewis. The entire right side of the offensive line. Pruitt, Herring, and Lott. Watch this right here. These are the power guys, and watch what they do here to the Tennessee defense. Close them down, open it up. Then Thigpen does, breaks a couple of tackles, and then lunges forward for the first. It's an offensive line. Four of the five starters are former walk-ons. Thigpen again to the 20. Former walk-ons, but they're big ones too. Struthers is 300, Lindsey's 285, Pruitt 269, and Lott's 290. Twelve forty-five left in the game, trailing by two scores. It's seventeen-seven. Volunteers. Second down, seven. Ole Miss. Three on the down clock. Option left. Errant pitch. Big pin falls on it. Todd Kelly came in on. Chows as he tried to release the pitch and it's a loss of five they don't pitch softly they pitch hard and they get it out in a hurry that one was behind Thigpen never had a chance got to lead him out there just lay it out there let him run to it so it's third and 12 from the 30 Tennessee defender almost picked off by Roderick Lewis on fourth and 12 they're gonna attempt the field goal no they're gonna they're gonna go for it and this is because again they don't have the confidence in their place kicker it's not as much their confidence in him as much as the confidence he has in himself right now he doesn't have any would have been a 47 yard attempt His longest this year is 43. Chow's will have to run for it. Won't come close. Hardy and Bailey close in on him, and Tennessee takes over. Jeffrey Holder is furious, and he's going to go over right now and talk to Chow's because he came under the zone and was wide open. Red Parker, the offensive coordinator, talking to Shows. 
They're in a zone. Right now, they're in their back pedal. You've got the zone right here. There he is. That's Holder. He's wide open, and Shouse doesn't see him. Tony Thompson looking for anything, but cannot find him. A loss of three. <laughs> Old you, Dale Carter likes to have fun. They are having fun. Smart, fast players in the secondary. Make all their calls to certain formations. Second and 13. Short game to Poles. Third down coming up. Some of the battles today include the Little Brown Jug. Michigan will take possession. Indian War Drum will belong to Missouri. Victory Bell perhaps headed to Southern Cal. Third and nine here for Tennessee with 10.20 to go in the game. Leading by 10. Kelly has a wide open man, Vince Moore. Moore, however, goes down short of the first. He could have made one cut and maybe picked up the first down at the 36. But Reggie Parrott moved in on him and shut him down short of the first. That was a well-designed play. Could have been called an illegal pick. Adams, the tight end, came down and just took everybody out. Moore ran right to Adams and then cut underneath of him. Joey Chapman comes in. He has not had a punt block this year. Brown Lee from his 26. Tennessee will start its next drive from the 33-yard line. Under 10 minutes left in this game at a 10-point lead. A lot of fun things to do around Memphis. You can eat some barbecue. I tell you, my partner tucked it away this week. <laughs> Another thing you don't want to miss is the duck tradition, duckomania. It's over at the uh, Peabody Hotel. It's a ritual that begins every day at 11 o'clock in the morning. They unroll a 50-foot red carpet, stretch it from the elevator doors to the fountain. The ducks are escorted from the penthouse to the elevator, and then they walk out single file on onto the carpet and into the fountain. They march to a couple of songs, John Philip Sousa's Stars and Stripes Forever, or as you heard, King Cotton March. That's some suite they have, too. About twice the size of yours. <laughs> and you're right about Doc. He really did have some barbecue this weekend. Oh, I see. You can put it away. Pass is caught by Lewis Gordon, the backup tight end. Even had a pound of it at halftime. It's a gain of nine and uh, pounds, that is. You know, that's only Gordon's second catch of the year. Sets up second and one for Ole Miss. Nine minutes left. Baldwin picks up the first down. Tackled by Daryl Hardy. And let's go to John Duckery. Ha <laughs> ha, Duckery. What's this about all those ribs? I didn't have any ribs. It was Tim Brandt. But you know, along the sidelines, Ole Miss, you don't get the feeling that they're going to quit. They've been walking around saying to one another, it's time, it's time. They're sick of being the Rodney Dangerfields of the SEC. They want to step forward and stay in this game. And I have one other point to make after this play, Jimmy. All right, Doc, we'll get it right back. Chows flips it over to Baldwin. Stops the clock going out of bounds, but it's just a gain of a yard. Doc? You know, Jimmy, the mentality, and you were talking about it before, of the walk-on mentality. I mean, they're not only welcome at Ole Miss, they're actually an integral part of the program. Some 40 guys came to Ole Miss without scholarships and have become part of the program. Some of them, like Jeffrey Holder, uh, have gotten scholarships. So there's a work mentality here, guys that just don't quit, that want to play the game, and that's what Billy Brewer has fostered here, and that's what you're seeing at this moment here in the fourth quarter. Second and nine. Thick pin 
lunges to the 50. It'll set up a third down situation. Not only the walk-ons, but also the junior college players have made this a dramatically different team. And that includes Baldwin, who is a junior college community college transfer. I'm a little worried about Houston today, maybe putting up 100. We come in on second quarter against Eastern Washington, the Division I AA opponent. The Slinger. Slinger's got that thing going. Courtney is the single back on this critical third down play. Over the head of his target, Eddie Small. J.J. McCleskey on the coverage. And with 7.50 to go, they're going to bring out the punt team. I'm going to tell you something, Jim. I'd come back with Luke. He moved the ball. He turned it over. But if he holds on to it, they're moving the football. Charles right now just not, does not look sharp. Charles Childers you're looking at. It's his fourth year punting at Ole Miss. Dale Carter has been banged up. He's right back in the game waiting for the return. Fair catch made by Carter at the 23 yard line. Now you see in total offense Mississippi has the edge. However the Rebels have turned it over four times today and twice inside of the Tennessee 20. Jim Nance along with Tim Brand and John Dockery. One half quarter to go and a 10 point lead for the Bulls. Start out this drive from their own 23. Greg Amsler. Great alley for him and he gets to the 44 yard line. 21 yards on the run. Let's get an up update on Penn State and no they threw that touchdown over Jeff Burris who's a converted running back as of a week and a half ago secondary problems at Notre Dame first down Amsler and a gain of two tackled by Kelvin Pritchett Jim, this is a critical drive right now for the Ole Miss defense and the Tennessee offense. Seven minutes exactly remain in the ball game. Mississippi with two timeouts left, Tennessee with three. Mississippi has to shut them down right now. Cannot afford to let them melt the clock. They trail by ten points. They've got to stop them, get the ball back, and make something happen offensively. Second and seven. Another avenue for Amsler and a first down after an eight yard carry. Well designed, properly executed. McCray got a big block. They went to trips. All of a sudden, Ole Miss lines up for the pass, so they run the draw. Here they come now. Amsler underneath. McCray gets the big block, and it's another big gainer for Tennessee. Remember, if Tennessee wins this game today, victories over Kentucky and Vanderbilt the next two weeks will put them in the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. They should be heavy favorites in the next two games. Amsler. And a face mask is going to be called on Philip Kent. Still a 10-yard run by Amsler. Personal foul, face mask against the defense, 15 yards, first down. UCLA rebounding to take the lead against Southern Cal in the fourth. He's talking about should Tennessee win, that would drop Ole Miss to 8-2 and two on the year. You know, Tim, the Fiesta Bowl has said it will select the second place team from the Southeastern Conference to oppose Louisville. In their beleaguered January 1st Bowl, I spoke with Fiesta Bowl officials last night, and they informed me that should Ole Miss lose this game, the Rebels will not receive consideration from the Fiesta. The Bowl officials consider it just unfathomable to invite a team whose fans are waving Confederate flags and singing Dixie in light of all the recent developments down Phoenix Way. 
So just a two-yard run by Amsler. Jim, you know the Fiesta Bowl situation certainly has brought focus to and raised consciousness of some very controversial issues, and I think that's good anytime you talk about things. It usually stimulates and brings on change. I don't believe politics and athletes so go hand-in-hand, hand, and athletes being used as pawns to establish leverage I think is wrong. <laughs> Under five to go. Second down and eight, Tennessee. Amsler will lose a yard, maybe two. Hit by Pete Harris. Time to announce the Toyota Leadership Award winners for citizenship and academics. All of that combined. Davis from Tennessee gets it. He's very involved in his community in the Just Say No program and staying straight, volunteers for the American Cancer Society. And congratulations to Todd Sandroni of Mississippi as well. He works in promotion of March of Dimes and carries a 3.57 great point average. Third and 11. Ole Miss must stop him. That'll stop the clock short of the first at the 20-yard line. Toyota donates a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Congratulations to Anton Davis and Todd Sandroni. Fourth and about five to go, maybe six. And they'll bring out Greg Burke. Made his only attempt of the afternoon. This one is 36 yards away. Jason Julian on the hold. Burke is good again as he splits the sticks. Exactly four minutes left. Ole Miss will need a couple of touchdowns. Trailing 20 to 7. Much of Ole Miss's inspiration for this fine season they've had has come from their fallen teammate, Chucky Mullen, who is behind me right here watching the game in the quarter in the end zone. A heartwarming story of give and take. Chucky, of course, last year paralyzed when he made a tackle against Vanderbilt. And the state of Mississippi and his teammates in the community rallying behind him, raising $900,000 for medical care and for Chucky's housing. And I talked to Chucky throughout the game, and he just wants the people to know how much it's meant to him in his life and death struggle to survive. Back to you, Jim and Tim. You know, Doc, that's a wonderful story how the students, the citizens of the state of Mississippi have rallied behind Chucky Mullen. And they have built him a house, given him the financial freedom he'll have the rest of his life where he does not have to worry about the income to support him. Kick goes out of bounds by Chapman. Greg Burke will... Uh, kick off they've been giving the duties to Chapman up to this point the punter but now he'll kick off Burke Tyrone Ashley and Vincent Brownlee are back the high bounce comes to the 21 yard line it's Ashley and a good run by Ashley spot him at the 38 yard line Old Miss now has to freeze the clock at every opportunity. Now, because of the field goal, they need two touchdowns. Got off that 10-point mark. Trailed by two touchdowns. Now they've got to 3.52 left. Get to the sidelines. Use their timeouts. Not yet. Hold the timeouts, but you're going to have to use them effectively. They've got two left. Chows is the quarterback. Throws it underneath to Camp Roberts, and it's a completion. Clock continues to move. You might notice there's not a lot of speed on the outside for Ole Miss today. Their top receiver in that area, Tyrone Montgomery, injured a knee against LSU and is out this week. 
There's a move into Tennessee territory. Eddie Small on the reception and a gain of 13. And Jim, that'll stop the clock while they move the chain. Stops the clock at 320. They get up to the line. He's calling the play now. They'll run it to the 34, a gain of six. Hit by Ernest Fields. You're right about the lack of speed. The coaches joke about Jeffrey Holder. They say he can't run, he can't jump, but he makes up for it by being 5'8". <laughs> He's an overachiever. Said it would take him about an hour and a half to watch 60 minutes. That's slow. Second and four, big pin on the screen. Hardy hammers him short of the first. How long does it take him to watch 48 hours? They better get up and get this play going. Third and a yard to go. Clock moving. Option keep. Shout has the first. That clock's got to stop. Now it finally does. They rolled off three or four seconds. There it goes again. That clock's got to stop while they move the chains. And they got a player down on the Tennessee side. Well, I don't understand that. Did you see that? The clock continued to move. Got down to 15. They started to move the chain, so they stopped it. Then it moved again down to 213. It's like Casey Rogers on the field for Tennessee. Trying to figure out the SEC team. It'll be in the Sugar Bowl. Tennessee or... Mississippi can't wrap it up today, but they can certainly have a huge advantage in being the driver's seat the rest of the way. Virginia will be there, even though they lost earlier today, their second loss of the season. What a joke it really is that these bowl officials have to get so wrapped up so early into picking their teams. They all scramble, they all panic, trying to protect themselves, and here's what happens. They end up getting the teams that can lose some some games at the end of the season it, it's ridiculous and it should really come to a stop instead next year there will be no official date this year they for window dressing they say it's November 24th when you can't really lock in a deal but all the deals this year were cut early in November to erase that date people will be locking up Notre Dame September 5th they'll have the chance to do that next year new new, new rules no, I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's absurd. Casey Rogers has helped off the field. It's a first down situation for Ole Miss. There's an arm and a touchdown for Ole Miss. Derek Owens. tight spiral to Owens, his second touchdown catch of the day. Young Brian Lee on the point after, and it's blocked. This can be run back. This is Ernest Fields, the former running back in high school. This will be a two-point play for Tennessee, and that will close it out. Ernest Fields on a two-point conversion run back off the block. That's the game. That was actually Floyd Miley picking up the block. And Miley races it back for the two for Tennessee. Making it 22-13, Tennessee by nine. This is the touchdown first. It's a post corner. They run it inside, force everybody in, and he breaks back outside, Owens does, and makes the catch. 
Shao's put it right there, too. He knows it. Right now, they're back in the ball game. They only trailed by two touchdowns. They can come back and win it. That actually moved them within seven, right? So now they line up for the extra point. Lee, the much maligned kicker, doesn't get it up high enough, gets blocked, and they run it back. 22-13, and that'll close out Ole Miss. Floyd Miley running it back 97 yards. Now Ole Miss needs a touchdown and a field goal. Miley had lost his starting position coming in today to McCleskey. And that's got to heal the wound for Brian Lee. Well executed, recovered by Ole Miss. However, a flag is down. They're going to catch Mississippi offside, I believe. Gary Abide on the recovery. Never seen a better onside kick executed than the one by Tennessee last week. Kicking team was offside, be five-yard penalty and kick again. Boy, turnovers and penalties have just killed the Rebels. Well, you get the point after to move within six, and you know you got a shot at winning it. But now you're back to two scores down. Boy, Lee somehow has to regroup and somehow build his confidence back up. One thing about that uh, touchdown by Mississippi, that's the first time they've scored in the second half now in four games. It's a good point. Quick starting team scored on five of its first possessions. But really have not been able to generate the points in the second half, although they really didn't have to in a couple of instances. Well, that's Carter again. This is the third time today he's been injured. He was taken out on the onside attempt. Young man who last year was playing before two to three hundred fans in junior college football. May have landed on that tender ankle the wrong way once again. Another well-placed onside kick and a recovery by the Rebels. Oh, and there's another flag down. They're going to catch him again offside. Michael Robinson had the recovery that will again be taken All away. Sides on the kicking team, be a five-yard penalty and kick again. Virtually impossible to win a game when you have four turnovers, nine penalties, and a blocked point after. The ninth penalty against Ole Miss. You know, the odds of getting the onside kick back aren't very good. They've done it two times in a row. Now they'll try again, this time from the 25-yard line. Kicking team will gather around and say, hey, what's going on here? Billy Brewer's out there as well. Don't want to get gun shy, want to stay aggressive. You may wonder now, if Tennessee wins the rest of its games, it would end up probably in a tie with Auburn with a loss and a tie. That's assuming Auburn would win the rest of its games. But why would Tennessee get the Sugar Bowl berth? Well, they'll take the highest rated team out of the SEC. And coming into this week, Tennessee was 10 spots higher in the Associated Press Bowl than the Auburn Tigers. Can you believe this? Oh! Ashley almost ran it down. Instead, he took out a Tennessee assistant coach. But there's another flag. <laughs> You're going to be kicking from the goal line here in a few minutes. Keep up this pace. Taking out another Tennessee player injured. Offside against the kicking team. It's declined. The ball went out of bounds. It's first down receiving team. A 
another ankle problem. You know, this is a well-groomed field, extremely well manicured and taken care of, but it's like zoysia grass. It's very thick, and you wear those cleats, and you get caught in there. Twist your ankles, twist your knees. This could be Lee Wood, 17. Oh, that's a big hit. He was sandwiched in there. Third team receiver, Lee Wood. Michael Robinson with the big hit on that play. Boy, almost put his eyeballs in his forehead. Well, we have a Pickens, who's the injured player. And that's a man they cannot afford to lose the rest of the way in the 90 season. Mississippi can only stop the clock twice. Tony Thompson. A gain of a yard. Thompson next week uh, against Kentucky will most likely go over a thousand on the season. He's right at around 950 now. And will maintain his lead in the Southeast Conference. There's the timeout called. 144 to go. And here's the SEC standings. The run for the Sugar Bowl will look this way after this football game. Remember, Florida is ineligible to represent the SEC in the Sugar Bowl on probation. Tennessee and Auburn, we were talking about that before, would have identical three one and one records. But Auburn later tonight will be playing Georgia. Tennessee schedule the rest of the way. Kentucky at Neyland Stadium next week. And then at Vanderbilt. Two wins for the Vols in those games. And they'll be heading to New Orleans. Tony Thompson. Picks up a couple of yards. That brings him up to 105 on the day. It's update time. Oh, boy. Penn State came into that game winning seven straight games. And Tony Saka, the much maligned quarterback of Penn State, has fired him back into it, throwing that touchdown to a young man out of Colts Neck, New Jersey, Al Golden. Thompson. Penn State team gets stronger every week. I mean, they lost a couple early to Texas Southern Cal, but they came back. It's a young team with more experience. They're getting stronger. Uh, timeout called by Mississippi. Tennessee in punt formation with 51 seconds remaining. A nine-point lead. Ole Miss is out of timeouts. Joey Chapman in. To the end zone, bring it to the 20. What would be Thanksgiving playing this afternoon? It just gets stronger and stronger. Now this one, we had an update earlier, two and a half minutes to go. That had to be a late touchdown. Last minute or the likes for UCLA. 119 left. We get word now. A minute to go in that one. complete to Ashley. Here's a guy, Tyrone Ashley, number 33. He's been playing on both sides of the football today. He's helped out in the secondary and now makes a reception and a gain of 31 yards. Chows takes the safe route incomplete for Thigpen. Today's game's been produced by Michael Burks and directed by Joe Assetti. And college football today produced by George Barris and directed by Joe Terry. Our senior producer of CBS Sports is David Winter. And the executive producer of CBS Sports is Ted Shaker. I'd like to thank all of our technical staff, the crew here at Memphis. We'll all be spending the Thanksgiving holiday in Norman, Oklahoma together. I'm looking forward to it. That'll be fun. Ole Miss now drops to eight and two with one game left against Mississippi State. So what happens to the Rebels? Gator Bowl or Peach Bowl? First and 33 after the personal foul penalty. And there's a catch by Derek Owens. I think Ole Miss is headed to the Peach Bowl. 
I agree with you. It's one of those two. One more snap. Will they let him get one more play? Well, he spikes the ball to stop it, but it stops on double zero, and the game is over. Johnny Majors is now 6-2-2 two and two on the year. Ole Miss drops to 8-2. and two. Let me ask you, you told us you knew your football team would rebound after the tough loss to Notre Dame last week. How did you know? I said what we'd be ready. You told us your team, you knew your team would rebound for a win today. Well, I hope so. There are a lot of things I don't know. And I, but I was uh, I was convinced that they were going to try their best. It was a real tough thing to bounce back from it. We played hard. They moved the ball on us. We, uh, we made three or four breaks. And thank goodness our offense really put a lot of great things together. And, and our defense did much better the second half. Does a win like this and keeping you on the inside track for the Sugar Bowl help to erase some of the frustration of this season? Well, yeah, that pass is passion. A good friend of mine, much wiser than I am, and can handle it probably better, says make the least of what's gone, the most of what's to come. I have to work at that pretty hard sometimes, but we got to make the most of what's to come, and it won't be easy. Kentucky and Vanderbilt are next door backyard rivals, like the Hatfields and the McCoys. Uh, thank you, Coach. Congratulations. Up to you, Jim Nance. All right, Doc, thank you. And this just in, USC with 16 seconds left. What a wild one. Has taken the lead over UCLA. A Marinovich touchdown pass. Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa in New York coming up in just a moment. <laughs> 